Well, there's quite a few supplies to gather for this project. Uh, so I will print a list for you, but here we go. You'll need a dowel. This is a quarter inch dowel. This is if you want to hang up your little mini button blanket. Um, you're going to be cutting up the, the fabric into little pieces. So you're going to see what it is you like using best. I, you know, everybody has different preferences. So I had the X-Acto knife. I used that for straights. But for sure, for cutting out the little figure, you know, you've got to see if your scissors are sharp enough. Some scissors, they just don't cut fabric well. So anyway, I've got a pair of scissors and what's really I like a lot for the fine cuts are fingernail scissors. They for sure can get through fabric and they'll do tiny details for you as well. My classes are using a hundred little buttons and we need glue if you can grab just a few straight pins to help anchor things as you go for sure you've got to have a needle and thread we are going to use two colors of fabric you can do this with one color there are felt they're really inexpensive and can be found all over the place. Uh, nine by 12 inches. One. So grab your thread and your needle. And what you're gonna do is cut a wingspan of thread. What is a wingspan, you ask? That is your wingspan. Open your arms wide from fingertip to fingertip. Unroll that spool of thread, and that's the length you want. You don't want it any longer than that. You can work shorter, but not longer, because that's your reach which you'll figure out when you get into sewing. Okay, once you have your thread, if there are any fuzzies on there, trim them off so it's nice and clean. Some people like to moisten the end of the thread so it goes through the eye of the needle. Easier. The eye of the needle is the hole at the top. And my apologies for video quality my friends okay grab the end of that thread and stick the thread through the eye of the needle and pull it through now you've got to tie a knot at the other end be patient and breathe i'm pulling my thread through and what you want to do you need to double your thread to sew a button. So get your two ends together like that. Okay, watch how I tie the knot, please. Oh my goodness, what I see people trying to do to tie a knot. It's not like tying your shoes. You hold both together at once like this, see? All right, pull those, wrap them around two fingers and tuck it in. Then hold the end. You just have to be patient. Pull and pull. There's a knot there. Okay. Now try that. Pause, rewind. The thing is, is the felt is really porous it's got a lot of holes in it so you need a double knot once you have one so hard to see it's ridiculous isn't it uh you got to do it again so around your two fingers again tuck it in hold the end and pull i'm 
pull, pull, pull. The first time you do it, it's, it might not be in exactly the same place. I have done it so many times, right? So I've got a double knot there. Be patient. Just trim it off and do it again if you Here's how to get your dowel attached into your 9 by 12 inch felt fabric, okay? Grab your, it's a quarter inch dowel, fold your fabric over, and you know, you've got to have a little extra here. Mark along, not the very edge, see where I'm marking? This is where I'm going to be sewing. I've already marked it all the way across. Then I'm going to move the doll out of my way. Get my needle and thread. And you're going to do what's called a basting stitch. It is so easy. Start going down. All you do, my friends, is go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. Pull the needle through. That's called basting. Continue all the way across. Down, up. Make sure you're going through or it won't hold together. That's what's holding it together. Okay. I'm going to finish this up. See how that looks? This is the back, okay? So I'm gonna finish up my basting. And then I'm going to show you how to add a border on top. Down and up, down and up. Just leave that thread hanging for a minute. We'll use it, okay? Now, the other side, this is the front of your piece, and you can decide, are you happy with that thread showing? I am not. So what I'm going to suggest is you take a strip of whatever color your animal is going to be, cut it off, and anchor it on top. I'll show you. I'm going to take the top of this. I'm going to cut off about an inch. You can use scissors or your X-Acto knife, whichever you prefer. The X-Acto knife doesn't go through this so great. Um, you might need to change your blade if it's dull. Or you might just say, well, I'm going to use my scissors, but I like that clean, straight cut. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so this is going to go across the top of my blanket. But since I don't have hot glue... By the way, those of you with hot glue, that's what you do, right? If you have hot glue or tacky glue or another kind of strong glue. Okay, so remember, I left this thread hanging, right? Oh, ah, how exciting. I'm going to grab a button. And this is how I'm going to get this strip to stay up here. Just stick the button on there going to hold this side and come through all those layers go through the hole go back down go through I'm making a cross pattern on this one go back down and remember you do not have to tie knots I'm going to go one more time because uh, it's just anchoring a lot of fabric there. I want it to stay. Okay, now on the back, I'm running out of thread. I don't want to tie knot, so I'm just going to go one, two, three, and cut it off. 
I shall uh, see that's going to hold this red fabric on top. Then I'll add another one over on the left side as well. Got my needle. Got some more thread. Another wingspan of thread. So I'm going to double my thread because it's a button. This is repeating, but that's okay. Two ends together. Go around two fingers, tuck it in, and pull it. Do it again. Maybe you'll do it three times. Sometimes, whoops, they don't match up exactly, these knots. But you need it kind of big because this is porous fabric. So now I'm going to grab the button, put one on the left as well. And that will secure. Oh, that's what happens when you don't have a big enough knot. Pops right through. So I'm just being gentle. Oh, because I'm on video. In some cases, I stop and make a bigger knot. Okay, so now I'm ready to go with creating my image, whatever it may be, my sample. So I've been playing around with layouts and I've changed my mind. This is what I had said I was going to do. Um, I thought I wanted to thick on top and skinny sides. However, when I laid it out, I was not happy camper. So I'm just saying you should play around till you're happy too. I tried you know, the skinny on top. And then I put it thick on the side, visualizing buffalo. And I thought, I like that better. So what I'm gonna end up doing, this is gonna be the front. I'm gonna put it thick on the side. I'm going to put this narrow on top. I'm going to leave a little gap in the top and put a hoof print in there. And, you know, we'll see. If I change my mind, that is my prerogative as the artiste. But, in any case, I like this layout better for me. You, you've just got to play around and decide what, you know, what's better for you. So that's going to be my thing and then the buffalo beast will be here even use glue just you know use a couple of pins until you get your buttons going definitely the preferred method but i don't think i'm going to be putting that in a supply bag for my students okay so a little glue a little bit of pins and we're gonna be ready to start sewing <laughs> 